Adobe just released some huge news. The biggest update to Lightroom Camera Raw in perhaps a decade. That is a complete overhaul of local adjustments, including much better visualization through actual masks, new tools like Select Sky, and the ability to combine multiple masks for much more complex and nuanced results. In this video, you'll learn all about how to make the most of these new masking tools and how they might impact your Raw and Photoshop workflow. I've already started my edit in Lightroom to take it from this original Raw to this current state here. So just to quickly catch you up to speed, I made these changes in the basics panel, made a tone curve adjustment, some changes to the HSL saturation in the yellows and greens, and some boost to the camera calibration saturation sliders to bring up more color in the image overall. So it's a nice starting point and I'm ready now to start making local adjustments to the sky, where of course we wanna bring in a lot more color and a bit of a glow, to the water, which looks very dirty and I'd like to clean that up, and to these foregone rocks, which I'd like to just diminish a little bit and restore the visual flow back to the waterfall and sky. Before we get to the actual local edits though, let's just play and explore the new options to understand them and then we'll put them to use. What we need to do is go over to this new icon in Lightroom and click on it to see the new options. And if you're in Adobe Camera Raw, you're gonna have these same options. Your interface will just be a little bit different, but everything I am doing here is gonna apply equally for you. Now, the first thing to note is the brush, linear gradient, radio gradient, all very familiar tools. They're still here and they basically work the same way. Where things start to change a little bit is the range masks that used to be inside them are actually now promoted to their own top level mask. So if you wanna go and just pick green in the image, but all the green, not inside of a brush or inside of a gradient, you can do that with a color range. And you've got luminance where you can do the same thing, or you can even combine these options together. So you can go pick things that are both green and bright in the image if you want at the same time. Of course, depth has uh, always been there. You may not have been aware of that, but that's a pre-existing option if you're working with a smartphone or something that supports it. And then lastly, we have some new options up top, including select subject to go grab people or pets and select sky. And if I use one of these two top new options, it's a little bit different in that it's gonna work with a new standalone catalog file on your computer. And it does add a little bit of size because it's gonna generate a bitmap. So let's click on one of these and see what it does. If I click on select sky, you're gonna see it's gonna go detect the sky. So it's just trying to find it. And now a couple of things have happened. This new masking panel has appeared at top right and I've got a pin for the mask. And notice that the pin is no longer just a little dot. It's actually a more intuitive icon that shows me what I'm getting. So a sky pin looks like a little landscape image, but if I did a portrait pin, then it would look like a headshot. So it just gives you a little better indicator of what kind of a mask you're working with. And this masking panel is gonna be really helpful as we start to make more advanced edits and things grow. But just to kind of quickly navigate it, the panel itself can be moved around the screen. You can minimize it to make it nice and small out of the way. You can even double click to go dock it to the right hand side if that's where you want it. So a lot of flexibility. What I'd like to do is leave it up in the top right here, minimize the histogram, and I can see all my tools here. So these are the masks, which are essentially what I'm adjusting in the image. And these are the tools, which is how I'm adjusting them, what I'm gonna do to the sky or to whatever. Now, just like before, if we hover over a pin, you can get a preview of what's being targeted, but notice that this is a very different look. We have a different overlay here. I love this new look to see things like you would see a layer mask in Photoshop. Of course, we don't have layers in Lightroom, so this is not a layer mask, it's just a mask. But it just gives you a nice way of seeing what a high quality job it's done of selecting the sky. You can already tell from looking at this that it's gonna do a pretty good job. You can also get that preview by hovering over its icon. And we've got two icons here because when you combine things, if we start to add, subtract, intersect, we can have multiple masks here. I could go and intersect this with like the blue color of the sky and then there'd be a blue little component here. So these components add up to this mask. So it's just the same when there's one, but as we get more complicated, you'll see how that works. Of course, we have some options and you can find them down in the bottom here. So if you wanna go back to color overlay, this would show you the familiar old Ruby Lith overlay and there are several different options, but I think most of you are gonna to wanna to work with either the color overlay, which lets you see both mask and image, or white on black, which gives you this look as if you're working with a layer mask. So I really enjoy that. We'll explore some more of these options as we get into it, but let's start to use this and see how this works. So now that I've got my mask on the image, I need to go do something to it. All my sliders are unadjusted and I can go and just, for example, grab the exposure slider, drag that down and notice that it's just working on the sky. And if I make an extreme adjustment, okay, yeah, there's some problems here. It's not 
a perfect mask, if I was working with luminosity masks, I could be more precise. This is not meant to replace advanced masking in Photoshop. This is going to give you an ability to create really good masks in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw. And what's cool about it is if we just go to more subtle adjustments, maybe I just move like a stop or two, that's perfectly fine. I mean, that's a great looking mask. You can zoom in pretty darn close and I don't feel like that's a deficient mask. I'm pretty happy with the results there until you get to a couple stops. Now it's starting to fall apart, but you can do quite a bit with this and you know your results will vary depending on your particular image, but I think there's quite a lot to love about this new sky selection. Now, what if we wanna go and do something a little bit more complicated to it? I mentioned we can combine things. So what if we say, well, great, I, I want this sky selection, but maybe just in the blue tones over here. Well, I can go and combine it with other masks. One thing that's maybe a little confusing here is the masking icon. If I go click this again, I'm just showing and hiding these tools now. So it, it's a little bit strange because the masking options no longer show here. They're now embedded in this panel. So once you have a mask, this is where you have to go to go modify things. And there's two ways to, to work. I can click on a mask and then add subtract to work with it. Or if I hold on the option key, it'll show me intersect. Okay, this hidden cool options there, and we'll get to that in a moment. But I can modify this mask, or I could create a totally new mask by just clicking on create new mask. In this case, if I wanna go work on the sky, well, then I already have a sky selection. I wanna go and combine it with something. If I wanna work with the blue in the sky, if I were to go click on add, then it's gonna take what I already have and add anything else that's blue in the image. And maybe this little piece of rock might qualify. If I said subtract, it would remove the blue from the sky. But if I want the blue in the sky, then what I wanna do is intersect it. And so I could hold down Alt or Option, click on intersect, and now choose what to intersect with. So I'm gonna say color range. And now I can click on the color in the blue sky. And now I've picked that up. And we have the same options here. We can go and refine this like we did before. So notice the, the mask is showing here, but the mask options appear above the adjustments. But we've already removed this from here. And if I hover, you can see these are the blue things. Of course, there was a lot of blue down here in the foam, so that got picked up. But it's not gonna affect the mask because we're gonna subtract this from the sky. So when we take this sky and subtract this, we get this combined result. It's taking that blue out of the sky. Notice the difference between the subtracted mask and the full mask. So this has got white everywhere in the original mask. And then afterwards, we pulled out those things that are blue. So now if we start playing with our exposure, now we're working on a different portion of the sky. So you can do these much more advanced, cool things. And we could keep building on these same concepts. Let's say now that I'm gonna go and expand this. So uh, I don't know, maybe I wanted to go and add the bottom of the image for no particular reason. I can just go say add, go grab a uh, linear gradient, let's do that, and drag it up. And now that's been added to this as well. And you see when I hover it, you show it, that's what's gonna be added. And the combined mask is all of these things. So it's the sky minus the color range plus the linear gradient. And that's the way this works. It works from bottom up. So we take this thing, then we combine with this thing. If it says minus, we subtract it. If it doesn't show an icon, then it's an add. And that's what we have up here, that's an add. Now intersect is, a little weird. Intersect does not have its own icon. It's actually not its own thing. When I chose to intersect this, notice it's got a minus. What happened to it is it's going to take this and subtract the inverted version of it. Whether I intersect something or subtract its opposite, I get to the same result. And that's just the way that Adobe has chosen to represent this. If you're on like a mobile platform and things like that, you don't even have an option to intersect. It's really more just certain versions like uh, Lightroom Classic here that have this. I personally find the idea of intersecting more intuitive because I'm thinking about something which is both sky and blue, but it's the same you know kind of approach that we can subtract the opposite. So you know the math here would be sky minus the things that are not blue, which is all this other stuff. So it comes to the same place. So a little confusing read the written version of this tutorial if you want more detail on how that all works. But I just wanna note that little quirk about the intersected masks. So that's kind of the rough setup on this thing. Lastly, I do wanna note that you've got some options within the components here. I can hide particular components. So right now, if I go and hide the sky, here's everything else. Or I can go and hide the color range and get back the rest of the sky. And of course, it's applying this exposure adjustment through this new mask. When I remove the color range, I did that. If I turn it back on, 
I get here. So you can enable or disable certain components in your mask. I could remove the bottom here if I want, or even turn on or off the entire mask itself. So some really powerful tools within this masking panel. I think at this point, we've done enough exploration. Let's actually use this thing. So I'm gonna go back to the beginning, which has cleaned out all my masking. I don't have any mask applied and let's begin this work. So I would just normally go click for a new mask to start the whole thing and let's work with the sky. So I'm gonna go say select sky. So it's gonna be a moment to catch up. It's grabbing the sky. And at this point, I also want to make things grow into the foreground a little bit. I don't just want the sky, I want a little bit of glow on the trees and all. We'll come back to that. Let's make the adjustments and then I'll show you the difference and why these combined selections can be so powerful. So I'm thinking for this, I wanna warm it up a little bit, maybe take the temp up to around 25, take the tint up a little bit to maybe around 15 or so, bring down the highlights to maybe minus 30, bring up some more color there. I think these areas of the sky are a little bit dark, so I'm gonna bring up my shadows to even like maybe plus 60 or so, kind of soften and even out the sky a bit there. And then to give it a little glow, let's go negative dehaze by a little bit here, something like minus 15 or so, and a little more saturation to something like plus 30. So with that, if we go click on the eyeball here, we went from before to after to get a much more interesting sky. It's done a nice job of applying it to the sky. I don't see obvious edges. Looks really nice. But like I said, I do want to kind of have things fall over into the foreground. I want the glow. And to get that glow, I need to let the adjustment spill into these trees a little bit. So let's expand things. Let's go and add a radial gradient. So I can drag this radial gradient, something like this. And you see what's happening now is I'm adding it to what I had before and it's expanding on the sky. And I think that looks pretty good like that. So we had our sky, then we added this radial gradient and we got to this mask, which gives us this overall result. And I think that that is, is really pretty you know, good in terms of like spilling light over but it's also getting deep into the shadows. This does not look very natural to me. There's not the kind of haze that would support that. So what I wanna do now is go and use the luminosity to back things off a bit. So if I click on my mask to make it active again, I wanna go and intersect this. I'm gonna hold down alt or option to get to the intersect option, click on that, and let's go down for a luminance range adjustment. And then with this, what I wanna work on are the brightest tones in the sky and the trees. So I can start bringing in the bottom of this to be more precise. Now notice one cool thing about this is luminance range used to have two endpoints and a smoothness slider. Now it has two endpoints and these little feather adjustments. So if you wanna go and bring in the edges, you can control the fall off in the highlights versus the fall off in the shadows separately. So the luminance range tool is actually more precise than it used to be. But let's take this and bring this in to maybe 75 or so and between these brackets, this is 100% of this adjustment. And then in here is the fall off. So I'm at 100% and go all the way down to zero. So let's bring this up to maybe like 25, which is now saying no adjustment in the really dark stuff, some adjustment until we get to full adjustment. And then um, I think the rest of that's probably pretty good. Let's consider this fall off. You know, I'm gonna bring this up even more. Let's bring this all the way up to the top, soften that up a bit. So I'm getting that spillover effect a little bit there and just kind of take a look from before to after. See, that's a much more natural glow, letting things kind of fill, but not blocking up the shadows too much there, giving us this overall mask. So I think that's a really nice adjustment of the sky. And let's go ahead and now work on the waterfall. So I need to go and add a new mask. And if I click add here, I would just be adding another component to this mask. What I want to do instead is actually create a new mask. So I'll click on this, and then I'm going to go with a radial gradient. I think that'll be a good choice here. And you can see it's showing the starting point is kind of blank, telling me it's new radial gradient with a little warning because I have not yet created it. So all I got to do is click and drag to create it. And now it's populated here. And of course, I want to move it into position go to the edges and rotate it so it aligns with my water. Something more like this is gonna be a nice way of targeting that water. So now to adjust that, of course, I'm thinking that I wanna make the you know color temperature much cooler, take out some of that yellow in the water, maybe like minus 30 even, 
let's push our whites up considerably to around maybe 80 or something like that. Take our saturation now down to just overall kind of pull that back. So that's a much softer look to the water than what I had before. And if we take a look at this thing from before to after, it's pretty good, but it's also spilling over onto things like the rocks. And so I wouldn't mind just kind of focusing more on the bright stuff and not letting it fall into the shadows. So of course, this is gonna be another intersection with luminance. So I go up, hold alter option, click to intersect and go choose a luminance range, at which point we can go and knock out the shadows, really bring this up to maybe, I don't know, something like 75 or so to the highlights, maybe even knock off the top so I'm not adjusting the brightest spots as much. And that's giving me a little tweak there. If we take a look at turning this off, we had before to after, sorry, wrong one. I want to go to the luminance. When we had just the radial gradient on its own like this, and then after we kind of clean that up and just notice things like the water over here, just get a little bit cleaner when we're not going and making these rocks blue like that, just being a little more isolated to the waterfall itself. And I think at this point I can adjust it a little bit further, maybe let up a little bit on my temp adjustment and maybe even bring down the saturation just a tiny bit more, keep it a little bit more white and less blue there. I think that's looking pretty good. Um, there is still a little bit of blue to the rocks there, and I don't know if it's coming from this adjustment or not. Kind of seems like it is. So at this point, let's maybe clean that up, and I'm just going to go and say subtract with a brush. And this is getting in the way, so we can kind of move this over here. And I can just brush on this area to knock that out and make sure that I'm not brushing in that. And now let's just take a look. And that's kind of cleaned up. You can see the brushing that I did over there. Of course, if that's coming in too fast, you can slow down the flow and, and all sorts of other brush adjustments like before to kind of clean things up. But I think that's looking pretty good. So let's then move down to the ground here. And I'm going to go and add a linear gradient. So I need to go create a new mask go for a uh, linear gradient here. Of course, the same shortcuts apply. I could hit M to jump into this tool as well, but I think most people are gonna find it more intuitive to just go up and visually click on it like this. And then we'll just go click and drag something like this. And then I'm gonna go and take my highlights here down just a little bit, something like minus 20 or something like that to just take it from before to after to clean that up. And I think that's looking pretty good. So with that now, um, you can see we've made a few different adjustments. We've made the sky look better. We made this waterfall look better. And we've got this adjustment here in the foreground mask. And that's overall improving things quite a bit. And at this point, I would say I can just hit escape, kind of hit it again to close out of that and move on with whatever I need to do. But I do want to note the tools here are going to give you an ability to work more intuitively in Lightroom. You can push things further in Lightroom, but at the end of the day, I think you're still going to be using a lot of the same workflows when you get into Photoshop. If you're trying to work with blending multiple exposures, this doesn't overcome that. We're still working with one exposure. Or if you're trying to multi-process the same exposure, notice, for example, if I go into my masks and let's go back to our sky, let's go and rename this. Just call it sky to make it more clear. Within this sky, these are the range of adjustments that I have available to me. I do not have the tone curve, HSL, camera calibration, local ability to control, you know, say the way that I'm applying uh, chromatic aberration reductions, none of these tools. And I don't have any of the Photoshop tools here. So I just have these tools. So don't get carried away thinking that this just eliminates the need for Photoshop. It's just giving you a much better Lightroom or ACR experience. And I will cover that in much more detail in my blog post related to this. And now click on this next video to learn more about how to make the most out of Lightroom.